There's definitely things we could watch, right? There's definitely things, but it's not going to be a scenario of big macro move tomorrow. Everything should work. It's not that market, right? It's not that market. It's not that scenario. So when you hear a situation like this playing out, again, your first instinct should be. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, Monday edition of uh, the AccessTrader.com nightly wrap up show. So um, there's an old adage, right? When you're breaking, when you have good news and bad news, you always wanna go with the good news first because it's mentally easier to digest. So this is kind of where we are right now. We're kind of in a good news, bad news situation. The good news is uh, the Qs and the NASDAQ held last week's lows, right? That's the good news. They, last Friday, uh, there was a really big aggressive storm of selling continuation throughout the whole week. Any growth story got uh, absolutely destroyed last week. But to Bull's credit, all they did was, and we talked about this on the weekend video, all the, all the Bulls did was kind of retest back to the 50-day moving average held the bounce and went higher. That was the good news. The second good news was, well, today, we could have easily rolled over, taken out Friday's lows, which was basically the line in the sand, and we could have completely swan dived to the next support zone. That didn't happen. And what ultimately came was a pretty good dead cat bounce rally. And the one thing that we know about dead cat bounce rallies, well, they're dead cat bounce rallies. They're not technically there uh, to put in lows, all-time lows, and now next thing you know we're talking about is all time high. So that's the good news, right? The bad news is very simple. The most pr basic thing in technical analysis is for a stock to take out, uh, for a stock to go higher, it must take out the previous day's low. For a stock to go lower, it has to at least uh, take out the previous day's low before you could put on any studies and any moving averages, any Fibonacci's and VWAP and anything else in between. Those are the most basic principles, right? Take out the previous day's high, we go up, take the previous day's low, we go lower. And as much as we had a really good number that was posted on the scoreboard today, the Dow up 600 and change, the NASDAQ up about 200, whatever the case may be, the one thing that we didn't happen is take out the previous day's high. Not only didn't we do that on the queues, but we didn't do that pretty much on 99% of all the names that were trading off the bottom of the range. And that is the biggest problem. And you know now we are in a situation of a game of chicken, right? Who blinks first? Do, do the bulls start to reclaim the five-day moving average where we got rejected here and here and here? We'll see. Can the bulls reclaim back the 50-day, can the bears reclaim back the 50-day moving average uh, for tomorrow after rejecting off the five-day moving average? We'll see. So that here's, you know, here's the time of your development that you are using the word patience and actually applying. You know, if you ask, especially brand new traders, you'll, you'll hear the common denominator. You gotta stay patient, you gotta stay patient. You gotta stay patient in the most rabid bull market, okay? You can't just randomly fire out shots and hopefully something good's gonna happen. So you always have to stay patient. Unfortunately, a lot of new traders, they don't know what they wanna stay patient for, and that is the problem. And you've, if you combine that with a scenario of we got rejected off the five-day moving average to the upside, but we did hold the 50-day moving average to the downside. Here is now a scenario that you are taking that word, the most powerful word in a trader's vocabulary, patience, and obviously now trying to implement it because it's the hardest thing to do, right? The easiest word to understand, the easiest word to reiterate to somebody else, but it's the hardest thing to do, just kind of sit there and wait for the next clear sign to happen. And what I'm guessing is in the next couple of days, we are going to have a pretty clear definitive area. Well, are either the bulls going to reclaim the five day moving average and start moving back into the 10 or the bear is going to take control back at the 50 and we're going to start taking out our previous lows channels and going back all the way down to the 100 day moving average. Until then, we are in a scenario. And again, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you guys notice this. There's a lot of names that put in really big aggressive hammers today, right? The most hammer is the most basic uh, basic indicator in the Japanese candlesticks. 
and which basically means if you draw a hammer, right, if you literally draw a hammer, you'll see the, the top of the hammer and you'll see a long stick. That's a bullish thing, right? And when you look at a lot of, a lot of tech names today, you'll see a lot of bullish hammers, right? Here's a hammer here, and here's a hammer there, right? Here's a hammer there, you know, here's a hammer here. Literally, literally, they're all hammers coming off the bottom of the range, even the video that looked like it was about to fall off a cliff today, okay? They weren't even coming for, you know, the 280, 270 weeklies. They were coming for the, the, the end of the month, December 245 and 247 and a half 50. So it, the, the bulls did a great job, but now guys, we're literally in no man's land, right? We're literally in no man's land. Majority of stocks have not taken out the previous day's highs. That's the baby step, right? That's the baby step for tomorrow. You know, all these stocks that had these big reversal bars today, these hammers, whatever you want to call them, their next step of course of action is hell, you got to take out now today's highs you got to take them out tomorrow and you got to start building on today's highs that's the order right that's the order of how stocks get healthy again and if we have a one day scenario of just kind of rallying back dead cat bounce into supply and get rejected and start rolling over that's not a good thing so the the idea of strong reversals of course that's bullish the idea of strong reversals putting in higher lows from friday's lows that's bullish the uncertainty part and to be determined is, is this going to be something more? And usually I'm, you know, I have a pretty, I'm pretty decisive. Um, I'm pretty decisive what, what I think is going to happen. If you guys know me, I, you know, I don't talk both sides of my mouth. We're either going to con 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 confirm levels and go higher or take down levels and go lower. But right now we are in the middle of ranges. Uh, a lot of stocks are literally mirroring what the NASDAQ 100 is doing. And now the, you know, we put on our big boy, our big boy pants, uh, we, 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 we pretend we're adults. And I think tomorrow within the first you know two hours or so, we should get a really strong indication of today's bounce and Friday's remount was real. And we're gonna start attacking higher prices or was this just formally just a dead cat bounce or a little bit of relief rally, get rejected again off the, the higher, uh, the lower highs off the five day moving average tomorrow and start rolling over. So that is to be determined. And this is again, the part of your development that it's not going to show up on the scoreboard. That you know, there's an old adage uh, in baseball. You know, people do a lot of things that just don't, you know, don't show up in the box score. Like right, making a proper read from the outfield to cut off the, you know, cut off uh, the cutoff man taking an extra base. It's not going to come up in 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 the scoreboard. But this is all beneficial to your development. And that, right now we're like in, in a rock and a hard place. Uh, we can't make a, a really good, strong, definitive statement of where we think is going to go. Anybody who tells you you know what's going to happen tomorrow, you're guessing. There's no way. Every stock is in the middle of the range. Every chart that I look up, it looks exactly the same. And now we have to see what happens next. So us being uh, intelligent, I think we, we were all intelligent, right? And enough to understand what's in front of us and trying not to will our way, not to anticipate and not to forecast what we think is going to happen next. Let the market tell us, right? Let the market tell us and show us and put us in a situation that again, we're trading and looking at the market from a position of strength instead of guessing and hoping and being in the fetal position and hoping to God that we're right. It's not about that. Again, the guessing aspect of this business is not for professional traders, okay? We, we, we don't want it. We don't need it. It's for people who want to be right. I'm not in any position to be right. I just want, don't want to be wrong. And that's the most important part of collecting data. We talk about the importance of collecting data every single day. And I think within the next day or two, we should get a little bit more clarity of what's going to happen next. So here we are, the bottom of the channel here, got defended two days in a row. Okay, that's, that's our line in the sand. And now we need to start reclaiming levels, the five-day moving average first. And if we reclaim the five-day moving average, Obviously, we start going to the 10 and for the stock market to be really good, especially uh, when you're speaking from the from the technology point of view, the cues for, for us to really entertain to be risk on again. Right. We need to close at least over the 10 day moving average, which is roughly 394. We're far away. OK, we're absolutely far away. So for anybody 
who, who think they're arrogant enough to believe that they know what's gonna happen next. Again, I'm doing this 22 going on my 23rd year. I'm telling you right now, I have no idea what's gonna happen tomorrow, but you know what? I'm open-minded to both scenarios and I'm willing to wait until those scenarios play out. So going into tomorrow, again, 50-50 coin toss, that's just reality. Um, yeah, are there some names that look pretty good that could, you know, could have a day two bounce? Yeah, sure. I mean, look at Airbnb, right? Airbnb had a nice, really strong engulfing candle today. One of the very few charts uh, that reclaimed in one day, not only reclaimed the five, the 10, the 50, and, and, and the 20, but it came very close to reclaiming this linear regression line. Who knows, if it takes out this channel tomorrow, maybe you get a, a second day pop. I mean, that actually looks uh, pretty good. A name like VRTX, that's been on a, a, a really good run for the last week. It's putting in, you can see here, three days in a row of higher lows. It's gotten rejected at the top of the channel here on the 60 minute several times. If it starts getting, you know, finally getting above that 60 minute channel, maybe it takes out uh, those recent highs. So there's definitely things we could watch, right? There's definitely things, but it's not gonna be a scenario of big macro move tomorrow. Everything should work. It's not that market, right? It's not that market, it's not that scenario. So when you hear a situation like this playing out, again, your first instinct should be tear down size. When you when you have, uh, when you can't come out with a definitive, at least position in your mind of what do you think is gonna happen next, scale down, go down to quarter, go down to third size. Make sure again, before you start allocating any type of, of weight in this market, we get a clear sign and get a clear path to the goal line. I give you my word, tomorrow will not be uh, one of those days. Uh, even to the downside, if we start rolling back down, uh, look at Qualcomm. You know, Qualcomm has held the bottom of the range here, but it's it's gotten rejected several times at higher levels into supply. So again, if it could just take down this channel here, maybe it starts going lower. For the other names like Amazon, right? Here's my, here's my point, right? Amazon got rejected. Tesla, right? Tesla was the only one that was able to reclaim the levels. Look, look Start looking at all other names slowly but surely right slowly but surely uh in the technology name you'll see either really big aggressive hammers calling off the bottom of the range again i'll watch tesla tomorrow why not if this was uh if this indeed was a reversal bar at least we see a lot of room back to the five-day moving average at least the congestion compared to another stock is not in play versus you know what the average true range is in Tesla. So yeah, of course I'm watching Tesla tomorrow to the upside, but we wanna make sure we're reading the tape the right way and we wanna make sure that we are not positioning, put, putting ourselves in a position of hope instead of putting our position in strength. So let's talk about today. Uh, as you can possibly imagine, you, you didn't have 75 pivots, but the ones that confirmed, they, they did okay. I mean, they definitely did okay here. You had uh, RIVN uh, traded back down to uh, Friday's low of 100. That It was a really pretty good pivot at 106 on Friday. Again, it just held that level and just started rallying back like everything else. Uh, RBLX got hit a little bit here. Uh, 109, if it builds below, can flush, can get hit more. Here was RBLX, right? Here's RBLX. So it took out uh, that 109 area, went down to 104. Again, very big reversal, just like everything else. Uh, you had uh, eBay, not a big move on eBay, uh, only went down like 50 cents. Uh, SCV, I'm still watching, didn't confirm. Uh, CRM got down to the 251 area. We saw a rising support there. Uh, it never gave, obviously, a second entry, so uh, that's still valid. Uh, Apple actually turned out to be pretty good, uh, but the weird part is, as the market got stronger, Apple got, we uh, got weaker towards the end, which was very, very odd. Uh, but Apple, just in case it tur technology turns around today, 165, uh, needs to build. Here was Apple. So it took out the 65 here. Look at the 60 minute view. So it took out the 65 and went to 68. It actually looked very, very good. And then all of a sudden, as the market got stronger, surprisingly, it got weaker. So go figure, right? Who knows there what's going on here? Uh, and then again, here's my notes. I mean, you know, it's Monday. Uh, let the noise die out. We want to see if the bulls can hold up uh, on this first candle. And you know, eventually they did. Uh, and the video was a really good short. Uh, 290 for builds below can can flush uh, 287 potential at least on the first move. Uh, it got the 287 I would say in about 30 seconds. I mean absolutely in 30 seconds that whole arm deal uh, was basically uh, now all up in there. Actually went all the way down to 280. So nice you know quick move, really really aggressive quick move on Nvidia. Uh, Apple take on the way up and again as you can imagine you didn't have uh, a lot of meat on today's bone. But again. 
we, if we take the good, we take the bad, and the most important part is we build off data. So tomorrow, I'm delta neutral. I'm, I wanna see how the market, uh, especially plays on the first move of the futures. If we start getting stuffed, and we see start things start rolling over, obviously we're gonna shift our gears. But again, I want the bulls to win. We, we, we'd love to see uh, a year-end rally because most of the names now are coming off the bottom instead, be, instead of before three weeks ago coming off the top, which again, again, we talked about jumping off the 12th floor versus jumping off the first floor. Obviously, you could survive the first. You can't survive the 12th. So, guys, have a great night, everybody. We'll see what happens tomorrow. Stay patient. Use the word patience as an area of, uh, of data, okay? And once we get that clear path to the goal line, that's when you go in with extreme prejudice. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless. I'll see you all tomorrow.